people with you all and uh, people at the really start of their journey and people that are uh, more much high level and been in property for many years. So we're going to be talking tonight about assets for life and our business and how we can help you uh, move forward in property and share our journey with you. Now, uh, just show me your hand if you like the idea of making at least 100 grand from your first or next property deal, please. Great, nice and high. Thanks very much. And show me your hand if you believe that getting educated in property is absolutely key to success. Great. And also show me your hand if you've got a keen interest in raising joint venture finance so you can start doing bigger deals using zero of your own capital. Lovely. Well, I'm in the right place with the right people. Uh, and again, it's a real pleasure to be here. So our business is called Assets for Life. Uh, and this evening is an introduction uh, to our six step system um, to making big profits through land development, commercial conversions. And one of the, 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 the things that I noticed with a lot of investors is you know, they might be, you know, you might be doing single lets or HMOs and that's great, you know, you know, keep doing them if they're working for you, but maybe you've got a burning desire to start doing slightly bigger deals. And your first development, it doesn't have to go and be 20 new builds, or it doesn't have to go and be a 20,000 square foot office. Would you agree that you get the learnings in your first deal, yes or yes? Yeah. yeah. So your bigger deal, your first bigger deal could be something a little bit smaller. It could be just to build two or three bungalows, or it might be to build a small block of flats, or it could be a 4,000 square foot office that you wanna convert into a few apartments. So um, don't always think that development has to start with something really big at the beginning. It's all about baby steps and getting that first deal over the line. So why are we here this evening? Well, it's to introduce our business, educate. Uh, I believe that education is absolutely key to success. You know, audio books, podcasts, events, you know, go and hang out with the right type of people. If you're rubbing shoulders with people that are just a little bit further ahead of you, see what they're doing, get their advice. And the more you hang around with successful people, the quicker you <coughs> become successful. Um, ultimately, you all inspire me to keep doing what we do. You know, we travel all over the UK, you know, presenting and doing talks. Uh, this is what I really love to do, and that's to inspire and to help you. So even if there's just one thing that I say this evening, a golden nugget that you can take away, just one thing, then I believe that my job is done, and that's going to help you build in your journey. Uh, ultimately, we're going to introduce the six steps. Um, it is just an introduction this evening. I think I've got you for about, what, three and a half hours, I was told, something <laughs> like that. Um, but we do run events, you know. We do run events where you can come and hang out with us for a whole day, uh, meet the whole Assets for Life team. Um, I'm here this evening with my, with my great business partner, Jay. Um, he's certainly the brains in the relationship. Um, he's the detailed guy. He's the numbers guy. You know, he really is the guy that spends a lot of time, um, you know, working with the contractors, uh, and I spend a lot more time with the investment, finding the investors. Anything sort of business related is me. Anything techy, property related, you know, the real nitty gritty is Jay. Uh, you know, Jay's got over, you know, 15 years experience as a chartered civil engineer. Uh, and that's great because, you know, what's really important in property is focus on the things that one, you're good at, and secondly, the things that you love. And just show me your hand if it's okay not to know everything. Okay, that's great, good. Um, and I didn't believe that four or five years ago and I've gone through a transformation myself. I always felt I had to be good at everything. I had to be the best at everything. And if I wasn't, I was sort of letting you down and I was letting myself down. And that couldn't be further from the truth. So have a look in your business at the moment and just get thinking now, what am I good at? What do I love doing? What am I not so good at? Who could I bring into my business? What can I outsource and leverage? Because there is just a wealth of experience here this evening. Work together. And I just find that the more we work with JV partners, existing developers, uh, we raise money, the team is growing. Do we earn a little bit less money per deal? Yeah. But it means we do more deals. So I'd rather have more fingers in pies and leverage and scale and have scalability in our business, then let's just say for us working on one development that's gonna take 18 months, then we do another development. You know, we wanna be doing three, four, if not five developments a year um, to ultimately live the life of our dreams. Because I believe life is for living. Show me out if you'd agree with that. Yeah, 
you know, what does your dream life look like? Why are you in property? Where are you going? What's your vision? What's your purpose? What's your values? And really in property, one or two deals can completely change everything for you very, very quickly. And most of all, I want us to have a bit of fun tonight because we're all friends. I've traveled up from sunny Essex to be here. So it's really great that we can just mingle and mix and chat and you know exchange business cards and booking coffees with one another. You know, Put yourself out there. And I'm a big believer of being seen and being heard. And if you want something different, you have to do something different. Uh, and certainly in property, we have to push through those boundaries. Uh, and my motto is think big or go on. You know, whatever it is you want to do, you can certainly do. So who are Assets for Life? Well, we're full-time property investors and uh, mentors. Uh, we've got two sides of the business. Uh, we've got our investment side where we work with joint venture partners like yourself. We work with existing developers. We raise joint venture finance. We then run our educational side of the business where I do webinars and events. We run a very high level mentorship mastermind program across the UK. Uh, we run one day events where you can come and just hang out with us and you know get more golden nuggets. Uh, we generally focus on building passive income through property. Um, hence our name Assets for Life. We want to try and hold assets uh, rather than sell assets however we will have investors that want to sell and that's also okay and we'll sell some stuff and we'll keep stuff where we can my wonderful business partner is a, a chartered civil engineer um, he decided to, to give up his day job a few years ago he was sick and tired of making other people rich uh, and decided to do it for himself but he's worked you know as a client with Alan Sugar worked on the Walbrook Heron Tower um, uh, so ultimately does you know bigger deals he, he sort of does in his sleep really uh, we're big on personal development and we're life coach and uh, mindset experts because you can have all the systems in the world you can have all the education in the world but if you haven't got the belief that you can go and do it you're gonna get stuck uh, and maybe that's been your experience for the last year or couple of years or five years you know you're in the same position now that you was a year ago nothing's really moving forward and you're just thinking well what's going on and that's probably just a mindset and belief issue uh, we are mentored by Rob Moore and Mark Comer uh, raised 2.2 million pounds in joint venture finance last year uh, that's going to be uh, it's close to three million at the moment and, and probably soon to be about four and a half million you know if we can go and raise JV finance then everyone in this room can uh, we was able to add 4.3 million pounds of property to the portfolio last year uh, we've just completed on a deal a few weeks ago which is a commercial conversion uh, turning that into 16 one bedroom flats uh, and we've just had two offers accepted in the last couple of weeks uh, can you believe this like one is a, an, another new build scheme uh, gdv uh, 6.5 million and one is a commercial conversion 82 flats uh, just shy of 10 million pounds you know and if you'd said this to me like three years ago i would have said on your bike like no way am i going to be doing stuff like this that's the truth but the power of getting educated the power of rubbing shoulders with the right people like anything is possible it really really is so i think it's really important to be connected to your big why you know what is your driving force you know why do we get up in the morning why are we pushing ahead in property and i believe if we're connected with that it's going to drive us um, into what i like to call the fourth dimension you know we're really big at uh, you know taking life by the balls and just just going for it so i'm not sure what your big why is perhaps you want a, a legacy for your children um, perhaps you're at a period now where you want a, a secure and happy retirement you know you know that your pension's not going to kick in uh, perhaps you want a passive income so you can leave the job you know, sack the boss a year from now or six months from now you know and i'm not saying a job is bad if you love your job that's great but it would just be nice to to have your finances in your control and what i love about property is that rather than every month you start on zero again you know if you've got you know commercial units converted into sa or you've got a whole bunch of hmos or you're single less then every month you're starting again at two five ten fifteen twenty thousand pounds whatever your passive figure is uh, i love living life so maybe you want luxury holidays and that's great because it's all paid for now by the tenants uh, you know building an asset back business uh, perhaps you want to upgrade your car uh, maybe you want to get your money working for you perhaps you want to become a millionaire i don't know you know that might be, might feel great if you're not one already 
you know, but like how many million do you want? One million, two million, three million? You know, and you start getting into the land development commercial space, you know, one or two deals can really change things for you. Uh, and, or maybe you don't want to go too big. Maybe you just want <coughs> peace of mind. Your bills are paid, you can go on holiday a few times a year, you know, there's enough money at the end of the month, you can sort your credit cards out, and you can just have a nice life without the hassle and the worry of what is going on out there. Um, but I'm sure your why is the same as my why. I do jump out of planes, um, so I uh, love jumping out of planes. I really enjoy that. Um, enjoy, uh, there's me over in Florida last year, you know, with Rob Moore and, you know, David Siegler and Paul Smith. You know, the whole group of Progressive have, have really helped us to go on to a different level. Um, love having a mobile lifestyle business, so, you know, that's a £41 common car. Uh, love to get out to France once a year, if not more. And it's great because they've got, like, brilliant Wi-Fi facilities. They cook me two meals a day. I can just get in my bivvy, operate my business, knowing that my power team is back in the UK doing all of the hard work. Because I love the idea, I don't know about you, of doing less and earning more. Is that okay, yes or yes? Yeah. yeah, doing less and earning more. And what can happen in property if you're not careful? Don't get me wrong, you've got to grind it out. And we grind it out. But it's a lifestyle business. And if you're not careful, you can find yourself spinning so many plates and you're then working 14, 15 hours a day and it's no different to the job that you had before and you become a slave to your own business. So I'm very big on uh, doing less and earning more, focusing on what I'm good at and what I'm not, um, focusing on what I'm good at and what I enjoy, and then bringing in the team, bringing in all the other experts. And what I want you guys doing is just sitting at the top of the tree, you know, managing the managers, managing the managers. Uh, also was able to get a world record last year, and that was really great. Uh, part of the progressive uh, speaking team, and we raised 130,000 pounds for Sue Ryder. So, you know, that felt really good. And maybe that's something you want to do, you know, is because once you start making money from property, there's only so much money we all need. And then you can actually really have a positive impact on your kids' lives, your family lives. You know, maybe you want to get involved with, uh, you know, charities, travel the world. You know, really ask yourself, what is your true passion and where is it you want to be going? Uh, but ultimately, my big why is my family. Uh, I've got two slightly older kids, uh, Eda's 12, Charlie's 10, and out popped little Ivy last year. Can you believe that? She didn't pop out of me, obviously. She <laughs> popped out of Holly, and uh, she just celebrated her first birthday. Uh, and it's really important for me to know that there's, I'm really starting to build a legacy for, for those kids and that family, uh, for my family. And uh, you know, maybe one day they'll want to come and work in the business. I'm already thinking Eda can be deal packager in a couple of years. You know, she's 12 now, so she's an absolute whiz on the computer. And maybe they want to come involved. If you ask my two slightly older kids what do they want, they'll say, we want five HMOs, because that's going to generate us 5,000 a month net passive income. And then what I'm going to do, Dad, is I'm going to go and become the best rugby player out there. <laughs> and my little girl will say, I'm going to go travel the world and I can go and help people become gymnasts and, and do cheer. But I need my five HMOs, Dad, because that's going to give me my passive income so I don't need to have a job. So, so again, you know, family for me is like really important, you know, moving that forward, moving that forward. So why is now the right time for you to get involved with land development, say commercial conversions and get involved? Well, you know, there is massive demand, uh, demand for affordable housing and, you know, I don't know the whole country, but certainly where we are, there is massive demand, you know, in many areas within a period of capital growth. Demand for rental properties just seems to be higher than ever. You know, we put these units out to rent and we have a queue of people, you know, wanting to rent these units. Uh, we're in a period of low interest rates, so borrowing is very cheap. You know, we've found it very good working with development funders. There just seems to be a lot of opportunity out there. But again, it's about having a contact with a good funder, a good broker, um, you know, and, we, and we've got Brian in the room who, who, who would be a great contact for you guys to use. You know, have that relationship with your power team and nurture those relationships. Because there is, there's more money out there now than there ever has been. And I believe with the right development opportunity, working with the right funders, you know, you can raise lots of money. You can complement land development with serviced accommodation or HMOs. So one of our developments, which I'm going to talk you through later, 
Uh, the initial plan was that the houses were going to become HMOs, the service to accommodation were going to become, sorry, the flats were going to become service to accommodation, retain the units. And what I love doing about bigger deals, and this is because I choose it to happen, is it's similar effort to let's say the HMO portfolio, but a lot less effort for myself. And that's because I've got the people involved. You know, you'll find me on site probably once a month, maybe twice at the most. I'm sitting on the main meetings. My business partner, Jay, is, is more involved on that side, but he's typically down there once every 10 days because then you've got your people in place. So question to ask yourself, are you a thinker or a doer? You know, just have a think about that. Are you someone that maybe sits on the fence a little bit too much? Maybe you think about things or procrastinate. What you definitely got to become in property, whatever strategy you're going to be doing, you're going to have to make on the spot decisions. You're going to have to say yes to opportunity. And sometimes that can be scary, but if it feels good in here and you've done your research, you've done your due diligence, say yes and then just work it out as you go, work it out as you go. One of the strategies we use is build to rent. Again, we ideally wanna keep everything in the portfolio where possible. Uh, why do we love this strategy? Well, more and more people are renting properties. The average age of a first time buyer now, look in London, is 52. Like it's crazy, 52 years of age. You know, Yorkshire 36, the Northwest 35, and I don't think that's gonna get any better anytime soon. 44% uh, of people rent because they can't get a deposit for a mortgage. Uh, again, I'm not too familiar with property prices up here and uh, certainly where we are in the South, you know, younger people find it really difficult to get on the property market. You know, a one bedroom flat in, in Brentwood in Essex is about 400,000 pounds. Mm. So if you want that as a first time, you know, you need a hundred grand, you know, who's got a hundred grand? you know, to go and put on a property as a first time home. And this is what we love doing where we are. We like to create smaller units, the bottom end of, you know, very boutique, high end, but price wise at the bottom end of the market. Because we really want to be adding value to our local communities. Um, the Great. developments that we are selling, you know, we do want to appeal to the uh, first time buyer market and we want to help people get their first flat or their first apartment so they can start creating uh, wealth creation. So would you like to see our system, yes or yes? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent, great. So this is our system. Um, I would like to say that I invented it, but I didn't. Um, Jay Munoz, my wonderful business partner, a top uh, Scamska ISG uh, uh, project manager. You know, this was a similar system that they used uh, when he was doing his big commercial stuff and we've simplified it and we've brought it into our business. So this is our bulletproof six step model. Step one is all about site finding. Step two is the appraisal part of the process. Step three is all to do with planning. Step four is funding. Step five is construction. And step six is the exit. And what, what people can sometimes do is they start thinking about construction or the planning process at the beginning and that takes them away from looking at deals and building relationships with agents. You know, what is key, if we want to get a property over the line, be it a single let, a HMO, a land deal, a commercial deal, an SA unit, a rent to rent deal, you have to be out there finding the deals that work. How do you do that? Well, you build relationships with agents. You can do direct-to-vendor marketing. And trust me, you find a deal that stacks, there is an abundance of money and joint venture partners that will come in and help you do that deal. So, you know, finding money really isn't the issue, it's finding the right deal that stacks. So, you know, this evening I'm gonna sort of dig deep into a couple of these steps um, ultimately, I've only got you for the time that I've got you, um, but you will be able to come and spend a day with us, uh, and hang out with us where we do a big deep dive into our complete system, uh, where we'll give you everything that we've got for you to go away and start doing this yourself. Um, just like Alec Johnson, does anyone here know Alec in the community? Show me Alec, you know Alec, yeah. You know, he's the guy, one hell of a committed guy, he lives in Thailand, 
and travels to the UK. He does his VIP um, up in Peterborough. Uh, he's, uh, he's got his business partner. Um, he, you know, very high level investor. Uh, he came to one of our events and he said, great day with Liam and great advice being implemented. I just set up my Facebook public figure profile, company Trello set up, company Vimeo account set up. Uh, still lots more nuggets to implement in our business that I'm working on as we speak. I'll be doing my first Facebook Live video later today on the train up to Blackpool as well. So we'll be sure to give you guys a shout out. Thanks for all the great advice. We listened and we learned, had a fantastic day. So Alex then went and done his first Facebook Live video. Anyone here done a Facebook Live before? Probably no, no, it's something people get a bit scared about. Um, we'll talk about that on our one day event. Not something you have to do. Um, we've certainly found it's helped in our business. Uh, I know Alex done his first Facebook Live that day or whenever he wrote this on the 25th of June. And, and by the end of that video, he raised some more JV Finance. So in property, we're really big on putting yourself out there, being seen and being heard. So let me give you a big tip to start with. Some of you will know this already, but it's reinforcement. What I like to call is your power team, the magic four. Okay, your magic four. So it's really important that you've got a great conveyancing solicitor that has got exceptional experience with land development or commercial conversions. Uh, make sure that you've got a few agents in your pocket and you've got agents working for you. And that takes a little bit of time because the agents, you, you know, it's like anything, isn't it? You've got to earn the honor. And sometimes when you're going out to say commercial or land agents for the first time, you know, they're thinking, you know, who's this guy or who's this woman? You know, what have you done in the past? Uh, but like anything, keep pressing forward, start building that relationship, take agents out for coffees, you know, build that relationship, have a great architect and also a super planning consultant working alongside you. Uh, we use a guy called David Kemp. You might want to just write that down. Um, David Kemp is our planning, or one of our planning consultants. He's a real good guy, uh, big in the community. Uh, we had lunch with him a couple of days ago because we we're about to do the pre-application. Uh, or We will be doing, a, not a pre-app, sorry, a prior approval application um, for the 82 flat commercial conversions. So again, he'll, he'll do a lot of the hard work. All I've got to do is pay him good money, let him do his magic. You know, he'll go up on site, he'll do what he needs to do, he'll speak to the right people, make sure that we're doing things correctly. Um, so again, having this power team in place initially, these people will know other great people, main contractors, structural engineers, subcontractors, um, main contractors, and then you'll build your power team as you go organically. So let's have a look at step one, uh, which is all about site finding. And what we're gonna talk about is our key criteria for success. We're gonna look at what sites to secure, where to secure sites, and also how to secure sites. So um, we have what's called our macro location, macro location, which is our generalized area. <coughs> So again, what's your macro location? Where are you going to be focusing? Are you going to be doing stuff up here? Are you going to come more south? Um, and this is a criteria that we use. And yeah, it will, may change from area to area or investor to investor. But we, we typically don't want to be traveling more than an hour to any development. That's really our cutoff point. Unless we've got a JV partner uh, that's going to be on site that we know, like, and trust and maybe I have to visit once every couple of months. Because I don't want to be sitting on motorways, that's not in my vision, I want to be close to home. Unless I'm public speaking or presenting, I'll go anywhere in the world for that because it's just an absolute passion of mine. Um, but typically one hour from our home, we want to make sure, certainly if we're implementing build to rent, that there is a high demand for rental units. So again, make sure you check that out. We want our sites to be close to a town centre or built up area. Population no less than 80,000, 20 miles within another large town or city, robust and various transport links, 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 <laughs> and at least 20 medium to large employers. Because again, we want to tap into the serviced accommodation market as well. So that's how we sort of identify our macro location. I live in Chelmsford, and our main macro location is Colchester. It's about 25 minutes down the road from me. It's where Jay lives. Uh, we've got Ipswich just up uh, into Suffolk, and that's a great place where we're doing some stuff there now, some HMOs, great transport links into London, 
David Lloyd Jim has just moved into Colchester. The whole uh, town is just really starting to boom. Um, and it's great, you're having some great results. So that's our macro. And then you can look at what we call our micro location. Because there'll be certain pockets within your town or macro location where you're gonna wanna buy sites or where you're not gonna wanna buy sites. And this is a criteria that we use. So ideally, uh, we want there to be a corner shop or a supermarket within a few streets. Uh, within two miles of some type of entertainment facility, cinema, bowling, theatre, uh, close to a bus route or transport links, close to a, a doctor's or healthcare facility, a major hospital within 15 minutes, and because with some of our developments we are building HMOs, then we want to be avoiding Article 4, and obviously uh, I didn't know Leeds was Article 4, but it seems like there's a big Article 4 area here, so again just be wary of, of what your end product looks like, and could that affect what it is you're looking for. So we've got very key areas within Colchester and Ipswich and Chelmsford that we will want to buy sites in and certain areas that we that we may leave alone. So does that all make sense, yes or yes? Yeah. Great stuff, thanks very much. Uh, this is Irma Burton, I know a lot of you know Irma. Um, she can spend a day with us, had an excellent day networking and learning more about my business as a property investor and deal sourcing. The Essex boys are awesome in content and delivery. We're really big on building a business. You know, now for some of you, you might just want to do one deal and you're done, lovely, you don't really want to scale or systemize or grow. But if you don't think with the end in mind, you're going to get busy very quickly. And you're going to have a whole bunch of HMOs on the go, or a whole bunch of SA units, or a whole load of land or commercial deals. It's really important that you've got your systems and processes in place. And what, what, what I'm really trying to help people with is actually thinking like a business owner. Now, how can I run this like a business? Because you all, if, if you've got a business, even if you're a one-man band or a one-woman band, you've got to be a leader. You've got a lead from the front and you have got to drive your business forward as best as you possibly can. Would we agree with that, yes or no? Yeah. You've got to drive it forward. So on our one day event, we do a bit of, we spend a bit of time around business and looking at your business and how you can systemize that business and a lot of the tools that you can bring in that's going to help you do less and earn more. Because otherwise you just start spinning too many plates, it's overwhelming and a lot of people give up and leave. So let's have a look now at step four, uh, which is all about funding. Now, is it okay in this step I get a bit excited, yes or no? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's raising JV Finance is like my bag. This is what I love. And once you believe in yourself that you can raise joint venture finance, your complete property world turns upside down because then there are really no limits. You can look at any deal within reason and just know that you can go and raise the money. And it wasn't so long ago that I was sitting, maybe where you were sitting at the start of my journey and I was thinking, who's gonna give me cash? What do I bring to the table? And what I was doing, and maybe you can relate to this, I was looking all at all the things that I don't bring to the party. Where what you've gotta do is look at your assets you as a person. So what do you bring to the party? Show me your hand if you are trustworthy. Should be everyone, nice and high please. <laughs> yeah, great. So you're trustworthy, you're energetic, you're enthusiastic, you're gonna get the right education, perhaps some of you are being mentored, you're gonna go on courses, you're gonna to listen to books. The reality is most people out there don't do what we do in here. They don't. They're at home now, having their ham, egg and chips, watching EastEnders, doing their thing, and that's cool. They've not been given this opportunity that we have to be part of a brilliant network, to implement strategies, to make decisions, to start carving a new way of life that ultimately is gonna affect not just your life, but hopefully your kids, your grandkids, and have a positive effect for centuries to come. And I believe we all have the the element of doing that. It's just how big do you want it to be? So funding, as far as I'm concerned, is a key instrumental part in your success, because we've only got so much cash. 
And even Alan Sugar, he raises joint venture finance, and that guy's worth billions. So the quicker you can get your first joint venture partner over the line, the better. So the first ever joint venture partner that we ever got on board at Assets for Life was a guy called Dave, a mate of a mate down the local pub, and we got him to invest £5,000 on a uh, loan agreement for 12 months on a fixed rate return of 10%. So he's going to make 500 quid on his five grand. And Dave didn't have a lot of money. And this five grand meant a lot to him. But he was losing money in the bank. Once you're taking the rate of inflation, you know, cash is a depreciating value. Most people don't know that. They just think it's nice and safe, it's in my bank, I can access it whenever I like. And we've got a responsibility, I believe, as investors and developers to spread the word that they can get their money working for them a lot better. So anyway, Dave was made up. It was like, oh, these guys are like, this is brilliant. That made me feel really good. I remember getting in my car, I ran home to Holly, my, my lovely partner, and I said, you wouldn't believe it, Holly, we've got our first investor over the line. 5,000 pound and that was going to help us do a one of our first ever HMO refurbs and then I called Jay up I said Jay we've got our first joint venture partner over the line Dave down the pub 5,000 pound I said I, I figured it out Jay I figured it out we just need to go find a hundred Daves <laughs> yeah just a hundred Daves and we're sorted now the fact is you probably don't want a hundred Daves as much as Dave's a nice guy it's not about quali uh, quantity it's about quality but it was that initial 5,000 pounds that changed my mindset. That's what really gave me the confidence to believe in myself more that I was having a positive impact on other people. The second joint venture partner we got over the line was a woman. I was at a networking event, which was all about developing your 60 second elevator pitch. And we're gonna come on to that shortly. And I stood up my head held up high, my chest puffed out, done my elevator pitch, and she said afterwards, you're exactly what we're looking for. We had a couple of coffees, we went through some touch points, and that was 250,000 pounds. And that was able to do a eight bedroom HMO. And then it's just grown from there. So again, for those of you that uh, wanna raise JV Finance, it's really important to position yourself. We're gonna talk about that now. If we can do it, you can definitely do it. Uh, and when you come and spend a day with us, uh, on, on our event, we spend a whole section just on funding because it's a really important section and it's a big hurdle for people and we're going to show you how to develop yourself and go out there, what to say, how to say it, where to find JV partners, what to connect, uh, how to create your product. So let's have a look at funding. How can you fund your deals? Well, option one, you can use your own cash and if you've got a bit of cash in the bank and it's depreciating in value, great, get it invested in some deals. You can use bank bridging or development funding, uh, and there's an endless supply of, of capital available out there. You can use joint venture finance uh, from equity partners, and again, we love doing that as well, uh, or you can use a mix of all three. So let me just share this with you, and Brian, you'll understand this, because obviously what you're doing in your marketplace. So our, our um, 6.5 million GDB project, which is a seven flat new build, high end apartment in Gerard Cross. We are gonna go through planning and try and go from seven to 10. Uh, 6.5 GDB, all we need to find is the equity part of that deal is circa 600,000 pounds. That's all we've got to bring to the table. Yeah? And once you position yourself, once you've got your confidence, once you're out there rubbing shoulders with the right people, you might sit here now and think, there's no way I can raise 600 grand in equity. You can. So from just going out there and raising now, and I put a Facebook post about this a few weeks ago, I've done a video, I put it out there, uh, and I got about six or seven really, really hot leads, and we're speaking to those people now, and raising that 600,000, circa 600, uh, is really not gonna be a massive issue. And the rest will come from development funding, and that will be another no money down deal. So with most of the stuff we're doing now, I don't even wanna put any of my own cash in. And I've got cash and we do other stuff with it, but really we are of such the mindset of doing no money down deals. You know, you don't have to put, and just sharing the wealth. 
know, get people in, share the wealth, do more, earn less, sorry, do less, earn more, <laughs> and move forward, yeah? Okay, so again, that's how you can do it. So what is a joint venture? Well, what is it? Well, it's a, it's a business arrangement in which two or more parties agree to pool their resources for the purpose of accomplishing a specific task. So in most of our cases, and in your case, you're gonna come and learn the six step system. You guys are you know, gonna get mentored, you're gonna go to events, you've got the time, you've got the knowledge, you've got the deal. And there's lots of people out there that are in the grind. You know, they're in big corporate jobs, they're earning big salaries, they can't get out, they're stuck, and they wanna get their money working for them. Or you've got a whole bunch of people you know, that are sitting on ices or stocks or shares or just cash in the bank that's not working for them. And of course, you've just got to find a solution. You've got to build that relationship, make sure everyone's protected. Like someone said earlier about JV agreements, a top tip of the evening, make sure whatever you do, even if it's your best mate or you think it's the best business JV partnership, please, please, please have your loan agreements in place, have your partnership agreements in place, your joint venture agreements, your shareholder agreements. Yeah, no worries, cheers, bro. Um, so it's so fundamental because you know what, six months, 12 months down the line, it's like, well, I thought you meant this. Oh, no, 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 but I thought you said that. Oh, I can't find the email, the scrap bit of paper's gone, whatever the case may be. So it's really worth, now, you don't have to pay for those agreements, the scheme pays for it. So when you do a scheme, it's like, well, part of the cost of that scheme is to a solicitor to draw up the legal shareholder agreement. So it's not even like it's a cost to us, it's just a cost of the scheme. Does that make sense, yes or yes? Yeah. Please do that, it's really, really important. So let's move forward. If you wanna go and raise joint venture finance, really important to do uh, what I like to call building your brand. So like, who are you in the marketplace? What do you offer? Are you being seen? Are you being heard? Are you on social media? Are you posting? Are you in groups? Are you commenting? What are your colours? You know, what are your colours for your company? So we're black, gold and white. Almost forgot that then. So we're black, gold and white assets for life. You know, what is your culture? You know, how are you going to dress? How do you want to be seen? How do you want to be perceived? You don't necessarily, some of you might think, oh my goodness, I just want to get a deal over the line. But as you build and as you grow, this is really, really important. So just some very basic fundamentals, and I'm sure many of you have got this, and if you haven't got this, then this is uh, great to get started. So what is your vision, your mission, and your values for your business and you personally? Have you got them written down somewhere? Now, what are your core three to five values? What's your mission statement? What's your vision for your business? You know, what's your long-term goal? Where do you see your company going? You know, when you've got your vision, mission, and values, that sort of makes up a bit of your makeup for your business. It's a great talking point when you're speaking to JV partners. Yeah, this is our vision, this is our mission, these are our values. You can then use that on your website. So has your website got your vision, values, and mission on them? Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't. If not, get it up there really important. Have you got yourself a business card? I know there's been lots of business cards going here. If you haven't got a business card yet, don't have to go spend a lot of money. You can get about a million and five business cards or Vistaprint for about 2,050. You don't even have to start too worried about your logo or your colors straight away. Just have a business card. Have something with your name on, makes you look more professional when you're speaking to agents, speaking to investors, going networking. So please have your business card. Have you got your three to five page website up yet? Okay, have you got that? And if you don't quite know how that looks, then you definitely need to get some help and support and we can help you with that. It's like, who are you? What's your strategy? Where are you gonna be focusing? What are your products? How can you help people? So again, doesn't have to cost you a lot of money. You can outsource it to people on Fiverr or people per hour and you can get something up just for a couple of hundred pounds. If that, you can go and design it yourself if you really want to, but have something up there. And also really key, I believe in this day and age is to have social media presence. It's a bit sad, isn't it, that we're sort of judged on how many likes we have <laughs> or how many cyber friends have we got or how many Twitter followers have we got. Um, and my, my mum, love her to bits, 
She's a bit of like a new age hippie, my mum. And she's got this like, you know, she's always been in business for years, always a bit of a wheeler dealer, my mum. You know, we, we really had like no money growing up. We were like so poor. I was that kid that went to school. I always had like, you know, holes in my socks or the bottom of my trainers were always had holes in. Um, you know, really, you know, wasn't, wasn't a nice period growing up. And I remember always thinking, I, you know, I really want to look after my mum. And my mum, as she got a bit older, she was always out there doing a bit of a hustle in my mum. Uh, she's got this like mad orange, crazy, crazy hair. And she's now got, uh, when things started to pick up in business, she, um, she got a, uh, she's in vintage clothing, but she's been left behind over the last couple of years. She hasn't got social media presence, doesn't know how to use Facebook, hasn't got Twitter, not doing anything on Instagram. So it's really important that you put yourself out there on social media, slowly but surely. You know, get some education around how to set up a Facebook page, how to be part of groups. You don't have to do anything mental to start with, but just have yourself set up on a social media presence. So last September, and I know a lot of you follow me in here, I do, I love a video, uh, putting the message out there, giving out great content, trying to help and support and inspire people, making new friends through property. So I done a video last year and I put it out there and then I got a message from a guy called Phil who lived in Liverpool. And he said, oh, can, can we have a chat? I said, yeah, no, no problem. So I called him and he said, right, I've been watching you. Okay, right, okay, freak, yeah. <laughs> that's what I thought, this year, that's what I thought. He said, I love what you guys are doing. He said, it just so happens I've got 700 grand. I'm a property investor, but I wanna to move to Australia. I wanna put it with you. And I said, well, look, we have to meet. I have to make sure that everything's set up properly and you know we get on well and our vision and values are aligned and what can we do? Uh, he lived in Liverpool. I was speaking in Telford PPN. So I went up there, he met me in Liverpool and over a coffee, uh, and a salad, we, 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 we secured the deal. And that 700 grand or 550 grand of it was used to buy the commercial conversion that we completed on a few weeks ago, which is an office to residential 16 one bedroom flats. And that was just off a Facebook post. And we've raised more money off Facebook now as well. Uh, but that's pretty good. Show me out if you'd like to raise 700 grand in the next few weeks. Yeah, social media presence is absolutely key. So this I also find really, really vital in your business and not many people have this set up, but it's important to have your products. So what are your products out to your investors? Because a lot of people talk about joint venturing, but how does that look? What's the service you provide? What does the product look like? What are you offering? How does it work? So we have for the investment side of our business, we have four products. How many products? Four. four, okay, we've got four products. So we've got the AFL Savings Accelerator, is product number one. We've got the AFL Portfolio Builder, which is product number two. We've got the AFL Buy to Sell product, which is product number three. And then we've got the AFL Sourcing Solution product, uh, which is product number four. And each of these products will appeal to most types of investors. So the AFL Savings Accelerator is really just a loan agreement, but it sounds a bit sexier, you know, but it is just a loan agreement. We've got the Portfolio Builder, which is really about wealth creation, working with partners long-term, minimum seven years. We've got the Buy to Sell product, which is really focused at investors that wanna flip and, and, and like make big lumps of cash, so that works for them. And then we also work with some people that just, they don't want us to have equity in the deal, but they want us to source product and project manage and perhaps manage the tenants on the back end. And we, and we do a, so we're not doing as much of that now because it's like quite a lot of work for not a lot of money. Uh, and we want equity, you know, we want to be working with equity partners, but, but we do offer it, you know, and, and we'll just see where we're at and what we're doing. Uh, so we've got something really there uh, that suits everybody. And for each of those products, we just have a three to four page PDF with our colors, our logos, there's a few pictures of me and Jay, and that just gives a little bit more in depth to, out, uh, to outline the key uh, unique selling points, USP, how the product works, 
uh, any fees attached with those. And it's great because we can just sit down with an investor and we can, we can start talking about it. We can email it out to people. It just makes us look a lot more credible and we've got something there that we can give them. Does that make sense to everyone? Yes or yes? So it's really important just to have a think, you know, what, what are your products? How do they look? Have you got your product brochures? And again, this is all part of your business and, and what you offer and what you offer people. So let's have a look now at your 60 second elevator pitch. And it was great to see earlier a number of people stand up and, and do their quick 20 or 30 seconds. I call it 60 seconds. It's sort of anywhere up to 60 seconds. And again, I believe that this is a vital part of your business. And it would be great to go to a networking event and everyone stands up, but people don't. And that's fine because people get a bit scared. They're not quite sure what to say. You know, it's coming around to your turn in the seat. You start sweating. Your heart, you know, your hands are getting all sweaty and clammy. You know, I can't stand up. I'm going to die. Because that's what it feels like. You know, getting up in front of a room of people, if you're not used to it and you haven't got anything prepared, it's going to feel like you're going to die. Okay, but the reality is you don't die. Okay, and those people that are standing up, they're the ones that typically are getting the deals. They're the ones that are making the business contacts. They're the ones going out on the coffees. They're getting more viewings. Because if you can just get over your fear, and I like to call it getting out your own way, if you can just get out your own way sometimes and have that confidence and belief just to stand up and just say, this is my name, this is what I do, this is how I can help you, it's gonna help you in every area of your business going to give you more confidence about what you do, how you can help people, you know, you're going to feel it easier going into um, estate agents and making that initial contact. And if you want to grow a successful, sustainable, scalable business, then surely you need to be able to explain in under 60 seconds what you do. So how do you create your 60 second elevator pitch? I want to help you create one. And I'd like you in the next couple of days, not that I'm a school teacher giving you homework, um, but I would like you to work on this. So if you don't feel that confidence standing up and doing this, please work on this over the next few days. I'm gonna give you some metrics to work towards in a minute to help you along your way. So would you like to know how to develop a 60 second elevator pitch? Say yes, Liam. Yeah. Yeah. Great, God, there was so much enthusiasm in that. Yes, yeah, should we try that again? Say yes, Liam. Yes, Liam. Yes, Liam. Great, good, I'm feeling the love. Great, so how do you do this? Well, we're gonna split your 60 seconds into four parts. And you're gonna to wanna to write this down, please. We're gonna break it down into four parts. Okay, part number one, who you are. So part number one, who you are. Number two, what is it you do? Number three, and this is more important, because people don't really care who we are, it's about how can I help you, yeah? So how can you help that person? And, call, and point number four is a call to action. So certainly if you're, even when you're doing Facebook posts, you always wanna give people a call to action on what you want them to do at the end of that post. So it's like X, Y, Z, do this. X, Y, Z, do this, okay? And as you get more into social media, if you're not already, you, you, what you want to be doing is getting engagement with your audience, people commenting, sharing, you know, getting involved with what you're doing, buying into your vision. So you've got four sections there. Now, how do you even break that down? Well, when you get home, before you go to bed, if possible, try this as an exercise. It's not going to take you very long and it's going to be completely life changing because I believe a 60 second elevator pitch is. Just bullet point who it is you are. So for me, it'd be my name's Liam. My business is Assets for Life. So that's who I am. So I'm a co founder of Assets for Life. What is it you do? So for us, it, it is um, we're a boutique property investment company. We operate in the south of the UK. We specialize in HMOs, commercial conversions, land development. Three bullet points. Who you do? How can you help? So for us, it would be, and again, it's, it might be different for you, all the same. It's like, right, my bullet points are, how can I help? Um, we help you build a multi-million pound property portfolio. We uh, offer a complete armchair investment. 
we can help you get your money working for you. So that's how we can help you. Yeah, we can help you become financially free in 12 months time. So that's how we can help. And a call to action is telling people what to do next. So bullet point would be, I'm gonna be standing over by the coffees in a networking break, please come and say hi. Now when you give a call to action at a networking break or wherever you're gonna be, make sure you then go and stand there at the networking break, okay? Now I always say the tea and coffee section. Why do I say that? Because that's where everyone's going. Yeah, so I'm not gonna say some weird part of the room where I'm gonna be standing on my own like a lemon vase. And then when I'm there, even if no one comes over to me, then I'm there anyway. And I can start inviting Barry and Margaret into my conversation and hi Barry, how are you doing? And where are you from? And you know, tell me a little bit about your story. And if you can just start to build those connections at your local PPN or business networking event, very quickly you can become the go-to person. You're the guy that people are coming to you. Does that help, yes or no? Yes, great stuff. So would you like a very special gift this evening all the way from Essex, yes or yes? Okay, so I'm now gonna do my 60 second elevator pitch. So this has helped us raise a lot of cash in the last uh, couple of years. Um, and, and this is just typically how it would go um, if I was doing my 60 seconds. So no pressure, okay. Good evening everyone, my name is Liam Ryan and I'm one of the co-founders of Assets for Life. Assets for Life is a booty property investment company. We specialise in HMOs, commercial conversions and land development and we operate in the southeast of the UK. But what we really love to do is we love to work with people like you to help you build a multi-million pound property portfolio so you can live the life of your dreams that you deserve and you desire and become financially free. I love people, I love property, I love business. So if you'd like to know more about Assets for Life and how we can help you, I'm gonna be standing over by the teas and coffees. Come and say hi, let's have a chat and connect. Thanks very much. So yeah, it's just something like that. You know, and, and that hasn't really changed much, you know, since I started doing it. You know, it might change slightly depending on what event I'm at, um, and it's definitely helped us connect with a lot of people. So, how are you going to nail this? Because I want you to nail this in the next couple of weeks. Like, I want you to be like, yes, I've got this, like, in the bag. So, how are you going to do that? Write this down, please. So, let me give you some metrics to work towards. Please write this down. So, you're gonna start, you're gonna go home tonight. Because remember, it's about action. It's about action. So I want you to take action this evening. This is why I just wanna try and share some really special stuff with you all that's helped us, because I wanna help you. So go home tonight, it's gonna take you five minutes. Pencil out your bullet points for your 60 second elevator pitch. Then what you're gonna do is for the next 21 days, it's gotta be 21 days because okay, that's typically how long it takes to get stuff in the head. So 21 days, you're gonna practice this five times a day. How many times? Five times. five times a day. So it's less than five minutes. So maybe you do it when you first get out of bed. So you're gonna practice it five times a day in front of the mirror, with your partners, with your kids, on your own, in the car, in the shower, in your bedroom, wherever. But please just practice it five times a day. Do that for 21 days, you'll have it nailed. I promise you, you will definitely have a 60 second elevator pitch nailed. And I just think it's such a key part of you and your business and what you can do. Because you just don't know when you're gonna need it and when you can pull it out the bag, okay? When you're gonna pull it out the bag. So how are you gonna JV? Well, we've got three key actions for joint ventures. Action one is fact finding information gather. Action two is present the deal and build desire. <coughs> and action three is wait and the money will come. So joint venturing is no hard sale. You know, you've got to take your time, you've got to be building, as much as you've got to build your deal list, you've got to build your investor list. Okay, and a lot of people out there, you know, you'll come across it, it's fine, it's not their fault, they'll be tire kickers. You know, they'll give you all the will in the world, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, I've got this money, I've got that money. And when it comes to it, they won't be in. And that's fine, you've got, to go through these, you've got to go through this process. 
So fact finding information gathering, well that can just start to know, hi, how are you doing, you're meeting someone. So let me give you some KPI, some metric that we work towards in Assets for Live, so we continue to raise lumps of joint venture finance. And it makes no difference to us if you're a Dave and you're investing 5,000 pounds, or you're someone who's investing 700, 800,000 pounds as an equity partner, we treat everyone the same. So they all get the same monthly call. First Monday of every month is investor catch up day. And that might be a meal, it could be come around the house, meet the kids, come and say hi to Holly, should we go do something, maybe a site visit. So it's really important that you work with your investors and you, you know they're like part of the family. And this is what, because we want them to invest again and we like them and we're building wealth creation using none of our own money for the next seven, eight, nine, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. So fact finding information gathering is really important. Uh, let me just give you some key metrics. So this is something we use in our business and when we continually use it, guess what? We continually find money. So make a pledge moving forward, if you're not already doing this, that you're gonna attend at least one networking event a week. That could be property, business, charity, a social event, but at least one a week. Make it just part of your weekly uh, routine. When you're at a networking event, make a point and say to yourself before you walk in, right, whatever I do at this networking event, I've got to introduce myself to five new people. Okay, to five new people. It's very easy just to go and speak to Barry, who I know, or I speak to Barry every month, because it's easy, it feels comfortable. But me and Barry have got some stuff going on anyway. So I don't want to keep speaking to Barry, because I can catch up with Barry down the pub next week. So make sure you go and speak to five new people. When you then speak to those five new people, as much as you want to build rapport and you want to build a relationship, yes, you want to exchange business cards, but go deeper than that. Have a coffee. Okay, so I might just say, Barry, it's been absolutely brilliant speaking with you this evening. I really feel we've got some synergy here. Are you a Starbucks or Costa Coffee sort of guy? <laughs> yeah, Starbucks? No, brilliant, just... great stuff. Do you fancy a coffee in the next few weeks? Excellent, great. So I'm saying few weeks because I'm taking the pressure off. What I really mean is like tomorrow <laughs> or the next day. But I won't say that initially. So it's like, okay, great, no, brilliant. So when are you normally available, Barry? Anytime. Anytime. Thursday brilliant. Afternoon. Brilliant. Great. So let's get our diaries up. I'll have a look in the diaries and I'll try and get it in as quick as I can. But I will always aim at every networking event. I don't do this as much now because I do a lot of speaking. But people in my team, like my brother, like he's out networking. Yeah. He, he does sometimes 13 or 14 networking events a month. Like he's out there. Okay. Uh, I used to be more out there doing that stuff. But I'd always try and make sure that before I left, at 10 o'clock, I had two coffees booked in. And if you're doing that on a weekly basis, guess what's gonna happen in the next eight weeks? You're gonna have 16 coffees. And you can't tell me that you're gonna have 16 coffees with wonderful people like Barry and Margaret and you know, hang out together. Investors, developers, sourcers, new people, old people. Do you think you might just raise a bit of JV finance, yes or yes? Yeah, of course you will. The problem is people don't have the coffees. That's the reality of it. They just collect business cards, they go home, it goes in the top drawer, there's no email after, there's no phone call, there's no follow up, and they just meet at the next event. So again, there's just some metrics that we use within our business. You know, we're just learning this stuff all the time. You know, we're not, we're not gurus of this stuff, we're students. You know, we're just working it out as we go. Um, but following those metrics definitely helps us. And if you follow those and put yourself out there, it will definitely help you as well. Uh, these are six top questions that I like to ask um, our joint venture partners or potential JV partners. So question number one is tell me what you're looking for in a joint venture. Uh, question two is explain what you'd like to achieve in one, three, five, and 10 years. So you're getting people here to think outside the box tap into there, because most people don't know where they're going. I ain't got a clue. I can relate to that, because that used to be me. It's like, oh, I don't know, well, I don't know. I don't, I don't know where I want to be in five, what are you talking about, vision? Where do I want to be in five years? People don't know. So again, get people to look at it. 
Now, describe what success means to you, tell me what returns you'd be looking for, explain what credibility means to you, and describe what is most important in a joint venture. Always come from a place of service and uh, wanting to help others. So again, just be seen, be heard. And you know, you go and have 16 coffees, 15 coffees may just equate to nothing, but you just need that one over the line. And actually, as you build up your investor list, you can then be a bit more selective on your coffees because you've got some money in the bank and you've been out there and you sort of learn as you go. So a lot of the time now, like we still aim to have that as a KPI, 16 coffees, uh, probably more than that actually, 20, 20 plus coffees every eight weeks, 20 to 25 coffees, but we're a bit more select now on who we're having them with. So before we have the coffee, we'll do like a qualification call with someone because we don't want to waste their time, they don't want to waste our time, see if there's more synergy. But certainly in the beginning, we didn't care. It's like, we just want to go meet the world. You know, we just want to go and tell everyone what we do and how we can help. But as you grow the business, that's not sustainable. You have to be a bit more select. Uh, but in the early days, just get yourself out there uh, doing what you're doing. Uh, so would you like to see the numbers on one of our deals? Yes or yes? Great, so this is one of our developments. This is seven flats and two houses. Uh, this is Colchester Town Centre. Uh, the project was to build nine dwellings, so we bought it with planning. Did we pay a premium? Yeah, we paid a bit of a premium. Do the numbers work? Yeah, the numbers work. Are we greedy? No. At least we know what we're building. We haven't had to take it through the whole planning process. So the land cost was 310000 with legals. The build cost is 1.1 million. Now, does the land cost, does that have to be your money, yes or no? No. Does that have to be your money, yes or no? So you can do these deals using none of your own money, regardless of your experience. You know, if you haven't even done a single property deal yet, you can go and do something like this. You've obviously got to get the right help and support. You've got to come and learn the systems, you know, uh, and apply that to your business. Obviously, don't do it on your own, you know, but you can. You can start right here. There's no reason why you have to go and do one or two sets. You've got to go and do one or two single lets. Learn on a smaller deal. Go into this stuff straight away obviously got to get the help and support. So the interest we're going to pay back to funding circles about 86 grand. Total cost is just over 1.5 million. GDV, so the end value is two million pounds, uh, two million pounds. So the profit on that deal is 492,000 pounds and 99 pence. Show me your hand if you'd like one of them in the next 12 months. Yeah, I don't know what that's going to do to your life, but it certainly has a positive impact on our life. Now don't get me wrong, you can't have all of that if you're doing it with a joint venture partner, okay? You're gonna have to give half of it away, but is everyone still okay with a quarter of a million quid in 12 months? Yeah, yeah and if you're only going on site once a month, what's that, 25 grand a site visit? That's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, obviously it's not quite like that. Obviously Dave's down there a lot more, but you get my drift, yeah? You get my drift. So, half a million quid on this potential deal. Um, if we're going to keep the units, we can refinance 75% loan to value. So we're gonna pull out 1.5 million. So what does that mean? Well, it means based on these numbers, and we will um, get more than 2 million, uh, based on these numbers, we would be leaving in 7,901 pound in the deal. As far as I'm concerned, that's like a free deal. Okay, we pay back the investors, we retain the units, Everyone gets their money back to go again. We retain the units, and again, uh, those units can be the two houses, HMOs, the seven flats will be serviced accommodation, and obviously that will generate the, the income there as well. Uh, as a result of doing these types of deals, we were finalists at the Property Investor Awards 2016 uh, in London. That was really great. We all went down there in our tux, and we didn't quite win that award, I'm afraid. We, we, we came runners up. Uh, we did win VIP of the Year Award 2016, uh, and that was a really big moment for us in December 2000. It's Paul Smith giving us our award. Uh, we were voted for by, by the community, 452 people uh, voted for us. Um, that was a real special moment. Um, the 5,000 pounds that we won, where do you think that went? Any ideas? Yeah, well, we do do stuff for charity. That that five grand didn't, but we do do stuff. That just well, I suppose Progressive is like a charity, so it just went back to Progressive. Yeah, it just went back to Progressive. So we are big, 
uh, investing in our education and our futures and being around the right sort of people, um, you know, going on courses. And, uh, and that was great. And, uh, you know, just before I came into Progressive, just before I came to Progressive, um, I was uh, involved with a business, a renewable energy business, which I set up back in 2014. I'd moved back from, from living abroad. I set this business up. And obviously my motto, like, go big or go home. So on August the 18th, 2014, the doors to my, my brand new business opened. We had the mayor of Chelmsford down. We'd done the whole thing with the ribbon and the big scissors and loads of photos and there was like champagne type reception. And you can imagine this, you walk up my office and it's like three and a half thousand square foot. It's all got white walls, white equipment. We've got the punch bag over in the corner. We've got the dartboard over there. And I opened the business with like, it's a big call center uh, in renewable energy, installing solar panels and other renewable project uh, products. And uh, we opened the doors with 28 people. And I was like, my key members of staff there. Uh, I was in like my new suit, just had my hair cut. I was feeling really good. Uh, you know, big investment into that business and the business grew rapidly. And before we knew it, we was up to about 95 staff. And I was investing in the business and investing in the business and we were doing what we were doing. And in July 2015, I walk into my office and my senior team, they look a bit sheepish. And they look at me and they said, have you seen the news? I'm like, I'm not, I've not seen the news. They said, right, we need to talk. So I walked into my boardroom, we sat down and they said the government have just announced that in January they're going to slash what's called the feed-in tariff, which a lot of people nod in their heads, to about 3p. And I knew in that moment, if you don't know what the feed-in tariff is, it's like an incentive that's paid to homeowners that if you have panels on your roof, you get paid for 20 years, okay? And they were going to cut it, basically. And I knew in that moment, I don't know if you can relate to this, ever being in a position where you knew a business was going to fail, or something hasn't gone according to plan. But in that moment, I just wanted the ground to eat me up. And I was like, Christ, like what am I gonna do? And over three days, I, I let go of 85 staff and we had tears in the office and I was definitely feeling sorry for myself. Just show me how have you ever done feel sorry for yourself syndrome? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely feeling sorry for myself. Anyway, let go of the staff, kept 10 cool people. I couldn't just shut the business, I had to run it down and wanted to keep it going until Christmas, but couldn't maintain that level of staff. I went to David and John, my accountants, about a week later, once the dust had settled, and I sat down and I looked at them and they looked at me and I just said, what's the damage? And David turned around to me and he said, I'm afraid to say you've lost 392,000 pounds. 392 grand uh, and I just felt destroyed I took my eye off the ball I wasn't looking at managed accounts I was just putting more money in somewhere in my heart I knew the business had grown too quick too fast but I was too proud to, 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 to look at it and to walk away because I just believed it, it would turn and then when the government made that announcement I, I couldn't make the money back anyway so, you know, in that moment, I remember saying to myself, if you don't change, nothing's gonna change. And I sort of picked myself up and had a few sleepless nights, had a few tears, felt like I really let my family down and didn't really know where I was gonna go. A few days later, the phone rings in my office. One of my girls pick up the phone and it's Jay, my business partner, who I didn't know he's my business partner at the time. And he just said, you guys have been hounding me, but I'm ready to have solar. And my girl said, my girl said, I've got just the guy, the MD is going to come and see you. So I jumped in my car, feeling sorry for myself, went round to Jay's house, we hit it off. He was part of Progressive, chartered civil engineer, been in property for God knows how long. He introduced me to Progressive Property and, uh, you know, the rest is history really. So when you're in like your darkest hour or your biggest moment, you just don't know what's on the other side. And as one door shuts, another one will always open. You know, fast forward to now, you can see, you know, assets for life is 
you know, it's booming and we, we love what we do and we're just learning all the time and we love sharing that experience. You know, and as a result of that, we've been able to do things like win VIP of the Year Award. Um, so question is, what are you waiting for? If, if you don't change, nothing changes. We're just moving towards the, the end of this session now, so it won't be too long. Uh, so again, remember, if you don't change, nothing changes. To get something different, you've got to do something different. That requires change. Uh, just like Natalie, uh, she spent a day with us at the Ultimate Property Experience. Uh, basically went through the complete six-step system. Uh, loads of valuable content on business structures, joint ventures, bonus session on mindset, and a lot more. I would highly recommend they, they recommend this day to anyone, either new to property or people looking to improve in their existing portfolio. So it really is for everyone. It doesn't matter if you're experienced, you're brand new, or you've been in business 30, 40 years, an experienced developer. There's actually something we can all learn from everyone. There's a golden nugget we can all share. Top tip of the day, go big or go home. Thank you, Liam and Jay and the Assets for Life team. Uh, same with Nikki. She travelled eight hours to get to our event. We've got people travelling all over the country uh, to come and spend time with us because of the name we've built and the content that we deliver. I don't know about you, but I've been on some training courses and it's a bit fluffy. You don't get fluff with us. We're like straight, we're hard hitting. This is what we've got. This is what we want to share with you. We want to give you as much as we possibly can during that one day event. Anyway, Nikki spent eight hours coming to us, got loads of action points as well. So, you know, the question is, what if you can start doing stuff like this yourself? You know, you are just one decision, one deal away from something completely new. Be it that's your first single let, your first rent to rent SA, your first land deal, your first commercial deal. You're just one deal from starting something completely amazing and just think, where do you want to be two, three, four, five years from now? So quickly grab your pens and papers. I just want to give you a chance, uh, an opportunity to come and spend the day with us. Is that okay, everyone? Yes or yes? Right, good, good, good. Won't keep you much longer. So, great. So, please write this down. This is our one day event. It's called the Ultimate Property Experience. We love this event. It's our flagship event. Uh, dates are, I don't even know where my dates are. We've got July 27th. And I think we've got September at some point. Yeah, we've got September 12th. So again, write that down. And the retail price is three, nine, seven plus VAT. Uh, we have very limited places at these dates, so they're not big events, just so you know, it's not like you're gonna come in, there's like 50, 60, 100 people there. We keep them really small and intimate because we want to connect with everyone on the day. We want to spend time with you. We want to get to know you. So July 27th, we've got two places available and September 12th, as far as I know, as of earlier, we had we had three places available. Um, so again, that's what we've got available. So what are you going to discover on the day? Oh yeah, it's at the Holiday Inn in Stratford in London. So it's like really easy for you guys to get to, you know, a few hours drive or jump on the train, make a day of it or even an evening, treat yourself in London, you know, go see a show or whatever it is you like to do. Um, it's from nine o'clock to six o'clock, so I won't keep you there all night. Um, so what are you going to discover on the day? This is really important. Just please uh, bear with me just for another seven or eight minutes. We're going to go through the complete six step model. Deep dive on everything that we can give you, where to source deals, how to assess each deal fast, the simple planning process, how to, fund, uh, how to fund your deals fast using none of your own money, how to deal with the easy build process, and how to maximize profits through multiple exit routes. So we're gonna show you buy, sell, hold, SA, HMOs, whatever the case may be, how you pull your money out. We're gonna talk about commercial finance, types of brokers to use, what funders to go to, we really will share everything with you. So you're also going to get the one day event at 397. On the day, we do a lot of work on mindset and goal setting, so there's a bonus session just on mindset, really powerful session, that's valued at £400. Um, as a bonus, those of you that join us and, and see the team at the end, uh, I'm going to give you my deal analyzer, or our deal analyzer at £550. And as and when you need it, I can introduce you to our funders, uh, do a VIP introduction, introduce you to them. So actually, the total value of the whole day is 1347. 
And again, it's only 397 plus VAT. You've seen it out there online. It's out there at the moment, 397 plus VAT. Now, you may be thinking you need lots of time. Well, well, yeah, you do need a bit of time in property. Some people say, oh, yeah, just one hour a week. Well, no, you've got to be giving this stuff, you know, seven to 10 hours a week to start with part time with the system. You may feel you need lots of money. Well, yeah, you do need cash, but it doesn't have to be your cash. So if you're in a position at the moment where you've got no cash in the bank or you know things are a bit difficult for you, that's absolutely brilliant because that means that's your catalyst, isn't it? That's, that's your turning point. Sometimes people with half a million quid in the bank, they're comfortable. They're comfortable. They're not gonna go raise money for the half a million quid's run out. So if you, the less money you got, the eager you are to go and raise cash. You may think you need to be an experienced investor where you can come in at any, any level as long as you've got the help support and you may be thinking you've only done single lets well maybe this is the time to start thinking a little bit bigger ladies and gentlemen uh, just like chris hopkins did a uh, great friend of mine um, he started his journey with us and he says it's gone from strength to strength we showed him a six-step system now chris was extremely skeptical at first he just didn't believe this could happen for him he's now on his second deal my life has been transformed. And that's working full time as a uh, corporate life, doing a security for like the O2 and places like that. So he's doing great things. Uh, these are some photos from the event. So again, you can see it's really nice and intimate. Um, there's me doing my thing. You can see they're relatively small rooms. You know, we probably have 30, 35 people there at any given time. Uh, we're with you for the whole day. Um, here again, you just don't know who you're going to meet. So this guy here on the on the right, Curtis, became uh, business partners with the guy Chris that I just showed you a few minutes ago. Sandra, she became our in-house HMO business um, sales and lettings manager. So again, we outsource all, all of that to Sandra. So again, great people there. So again, just to quickly recap, we're going to go through all everything we've got, the whole six steps, you name it. We're going to go through the complete system. It's a whole day, like action packed of content there is no fluff at all you're gonna get the whole thing not for 397 would you like a PPN tonight only offer yes or yes <laughs> of course I don't want to disappoint you all now this is just really important though that you take note of this obviously I'm gonna give you a, an exceptional offer to come and join us you just need to go and see one of the team members if you can't make those dates don't stress because we've got dates in October November and December the important thing is just to get your name down and get registered, and then my team will speak to you. Why do we do this? Well, we, we mentor people, we love running events, we find JV Finance, we find business partners and JV Finance at these events, okay? And for us, yeah, look, don't get me wrong, we don't do nothing for nothing, and anyone that says they do, they're lying to you. We're running a business, but it's about giving great value. Would you agree, yes or yes? It's about giving great value. So you're gonna get the whole day with us, not for 397, you're gonna get it for 47 pounds plus VAT. Okay, 47 pounds plus VAT. Why 47 pounds? Please take note, 30 people, this is typically the event we, ha we have, 30, 35, but 30 people at 47 quid each covers our room hire, it covers some cruise costs involved with, because we don't want to lose money, right, yeah? Covers our room hire, covers our staff costs, covers us getting to, the, uh, getting to the venue, and if that wasn't enough, on top of everything else, I'm gonna treat you to lunch, okay? <laughs> hey, come on. Sandwiches, teas, coffees, water, like you really get treated like kings and queens, you really do. That's why it's 47 quid, because it doesn't cost me a penny to put it on. I get to live our dream, and guess what? I'm probably going to find quite a bit of JV Finance on that day, which is going to help us, guess what, buy more deals. That's why we run these events. So it's 47 quid, you get the whole lot, guys. 100% money back guarantee on your 47 quid, not that you need it. But if you come to me at the end of the day and you say, Liam, that was a load of, you know, crap, I will give you 47 quid back, for wherever your train fare is from Leeds down to London. Okay, but it's never happened, never will happen because it really is an amazing day. Just want to say, I've kept you a little bit longer than anticipated, so thanks for letting me go over. Really appreciate that. Coming together is the beginning, staying together is progress, growing together is a success. Uh, you have all been absolutely amazing. £47, see Mo, see the team, and I'll see you very soon. Thanks very much.